Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Rose from Off the Cuff. Today we're going to be uh, sharing with you a part, uh, it's actually a sub segment of On the Rose from Off the Cuff called Wristwatch Rambles and Rants, which is a sponsored segment brought to you by Wrist Candy Watch Club. So while I don't do paid reviews, I do like to, of course, um, take any type of support that I can for the channel. Um, and part of that is accepting uh, segment sponsors like this. So essentially uh, what I'll do is I'll show a couple of their products and then we'll go on to talk about uh, today's particular subject, which is why I kind of lost interest in Seiko mods. And I was pretty huge into Seiko mods at the beginning. Uh, those of you even fans of the channel for a while know that you know some of my biggest videos were about Seiko mods. I was even on uh, Matt Farah's podcast uh, specifically talking about Seiko mods and kind of showing Seiko mods uh, to Matt and the team over there. So um, there's kind of a reason, and I think uh, it's probably not as obvious as some people think. Um, there's a little bit of nuance to it, so I'm looking forward to kind of just discussing that with you guys uh, in terms of you know the complexity of Seiko today and uh, yeah, why I, I just kind of lost interest in this whole idea of chasing down the perfect uh, Seiko mod and the perfect SKX mod. So uh, today we'll have, of course, the focus will be on this particular SKX mod. I did do a recent update to it, updating the bracelet to a more prospect style because that was kind of the theme of it originally had like a strap code hexed which had as I think thematically was great but I think this is a little bit closer um, in terms of the look itself and really drawing it all together so with that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get these pieces in hand and take a closer look all right guys now before we jump in really quickly check it out wrist candy watch club some new releases from them they actually did these great uh ribbed style natos so they do have you know i think that's kind of all the rage right now the nice thing is you're going to be getting really solid hardware to go with these check it out fully milled there even the finger here so all milled out nicely brushed um not super thick check that out actually quite thin considering uh, that it, uh, the uh, the style here so really really nice and you know these would be great on any of the options here today of course as long as they had a 20 millimeter or 22 millimeter lug width these these ones here are all the 20 millimeters um, and they're really nice guys I, I do enjoy these ones you guys know if you've been a long time uh, you know follower or subscriber you'll know that i reviewed risk candy watch club stuff on my channel back before i even had um probably 10,000 subs so uh here's just another snapshot of some of their newer offerings so big thanks to risk candy watch club for sponsoring this particular segment where we're going to talk about seiko mods oh actually you know what hey another risk candy watch club product check it out they actually have their own uh, quick release waffle style strap um, and it's really nice very supple um, and it suits this particular watch my slim turtle really well check that out so I think it fits really well um, and it looks really good so it goes with kind of the more matted features here where we have that matte uh, 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 Okay, words escaping me. <laughs> that matte aluminum bezel insert and the matte black dial, it actually flows really well with the matted finish here. And then of course with uh, you know all these triangular little studs, um, that texturing, the nice thing is you're getting a lot of play in terms of light. Um, so you're getting different shades, darker and lighter, uh, which again, just add a little visual play. So that's what's on my wrist today for this conversation. But uh, this right here, guys, this I'd say is kind of the pinnacle. Um, I do have an SKX009 uh, mod that I love as well, but I think this one's probably the most relevant to this particular segment So I figured I'd focus on this one uh, This is actually a piece that was done for me by artifice horror works, which were founded in 2011. They're out of Marietta, California I don't know if they still mod um, uh, I every time I check their site it says they're down, but they'll return so I'm not really quite sure I know it was a one-man show and they were getting 
quite a bit of uh, volume in terms of their requests. So uh, basically I spec'd everything out um, and he put it all together. The only things that I did, uh, you know, on my own was pretty much doing the, uh, the bracelet and the clasp, which is a Marine Master uh, clasp here. So you can see it's ratcheting. And, uh, but they did the movement upgrade. They did this special custom laser engraved uh, case back. Uh, they did the special signed crown, which is a different type of crown, as you can see. Uh, this one is actually, I uh, believe, a monster crown. Uh, and then uh, this, actually, you know what? Since some of you probably, this is your first time seeing this, for starters, this is my take on what a Prospex SKX would have been. If they would have evolved the line and they didn't discontinue it um, and they said, hey, let's bring this line forward, let's make it a little bit more upscale and uh, more current, this is what I think they would have came out with. So some of you are like, oh, cool. Um, it, it's, uh, it really is going for that OEM Plus vibe and that was something that I really loved uh, about Seiko Mods and just about any type of customization is getting something to look like it came from the factory, you know, and I think Think this really targets in on that um, so this is this did start its life out as a Seiko SKX 007 um, and then you know of course slowly had uh, quite a few mods done to it you do have um, a ceramic bezel insert um, this really nice baby tuna grip um, you know modified Yoboki's unit uh, which fits great um, and then you have the monster crown with a custom X for prospects um, the movement inside has been upgraded to a 4R36A originally had a 7S26 um, it does have of course the custom case back solid and etched with the updated specs etched onto there um, you're also getting a double dome sapphire with inner anti-reflective coating. You're getting an SRP 585 Mohawk dial, um, applied indices, um, you know, and versus the stock which was printed and much of the more modern Prospex watches that are actually now um, uh, just raised indices. So this was a pretty cool transitional dial. Um, you're getting the day date uh, with the black date disc. I like that with the frames. I think it just fits really well. And it even does have the small indice um, at the three. So it still is you know within ISO compliance, which is great. Uh, it's using the turtle reissue um, minute and hour hands and then the Mohawk uh, seconds hand so uh, really nice of course all Seiko Lumabrite which is great except for the pip on this um, DLW insert um, and then the thing the one thing that I did update was I got a WR watches stainless steel bracelet um, and it's kind of has more of that prospect style if we compare it to let's say this Marine Master 200 reduced uh, you can see it's a similar type of style there I mean not quite as nice in terms of the fit and finish, uh, but it definitely captures the look. I'd say the Endling fitment isn't you know, super great. Uh, it's honestly not quite up to par with what I had in here before, which was from Strap Code. Um, but I do like the overall aesthetic. So for me, the trade-off in quality wasn't uh, that big a deal, especially when I have higher end models like this. So kind of creating this that was like the best part that was okay hey i'm gonna spec this out i'm gonna you know put on my thinking cap and, and it was great um but ultimately what ended up happening is they discontinued the skx and i feel like the mini turtle was really poised and it's funny enough it had a very similar aesthetic to kind of what my estimation was um you know down to the uh, the grip on that uh on that bezel you know the very um symmetrical let me give it a quick wipe here quick wipe here the very symmetrical uh dive style layout um, of course taking it uh you know making it more modern uh, but also going a little old school by putting the crown at three o'clock really making it something different um great loom really fantastic this is actually one of the later iterations um, from the jdm market there were some uh international and, and usdm options that were available that have full reviews on the channel uh, but this is one of the later iterations where they did add also that extra loom pip at the three o'clock um as well as update you know with the pops of red but 
you know, they started making stuff like this under 500 bucks. Um, and that's not even mentioning the turtle reissue, which I have a whole video about how that kind of is the new SKX in terms of its desirability and its wearability and, and everything that you wanted the SKX for. Um, so, you know, even though this wasn't a huge commercial success like the SKX was, um, it, you know, it, it really fit the bill, but there was still the turtle reissue itself, which really um, fit the bill. Um, so for me, the other side of building out something like this is, yeah, well, I mean, what would Seiko's Submariner be, right? It would be the SKX. That's what everybody, oh, the SKX is kind of like Seiko's Submariner. It's just like this intrinsically Seiko dive watch. Um, it has its own unique design language. Um, it's just, you know, still residing within that tool watch category. So um, for that, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, the SBDC 101, um, this is the JDM nomenclature, or the SPB uh, 143, this model came out and it really filled that space. Like, hey, what is the Seiko Submariner look like in terms of just a really well-balanced, uh, super legible, everyday versatility, reasonably sized, right? Um, Seiko dive watch, what could that be? That's this, um, you know, and, and ultimately this is one that even if you don't like Seikos, this is just a gorgeous skin diver um, that is finished to such a high level um, and it's just really beautiful at the end of the day and it even has hard coating on it um, you know milled clasp here so you just there's nothing for you to update um, sure these are more a little bit more expensive and then you know a lot of these mods ended up becoming kind of the poor man's marine master because that was everyone's idea of what the Japanese uh, Submariner would be it would be the marine master 300 right but now you can get, you know, a, uh, a again, you're getting everything. Like, there's nothing to change on here. You're getting even an updated movement with an extended power reserve. You're getting sapphire crystal. You're getting everything, you know, hardened, beautifully done, complete Seiko vibes in terms of its design language. Um, and I love that. Let me just give it a quick wipe so you guys can really take some time to enjoy the finish on here so i mean look at that beveling it's incredible it's just gorgeous i mean you don't even need the sumo anymore because you have stuff like this um that just take that seiko uh you know design dna and just take it up uh, you know, several notches into something that can be really versatile and worn every day and is, you know, essentially aesthetically a, a perfect watch. Um, so it's like you don't necessarily have to mod something that, you know, is all already at this point very collectible in its stock form um, and, you know, just to add those types of niceties that you would expect from a modern watch like hacking and hand windability um, and, and everything from that perspective. The nice thing is this dial uh, came from a watch that actually had the 4R36. So the kind of fun thing is since it's an NH36 that it was replaced with, it's the same type of movement, right? Um, it would have been nice, uh, of course, to go up to the 6R style, which would have been the NE15. Uh, so it could have got an extended 50 hour power reserve but then it wouldn't have that kind of level of, I guess, the, you know, duality that you find uh, between the NH and the, the 4R in terms of the fact that they're pretty much the same movement. Just one is branded, uh, you know, for use by uh, third parties versus uh, being something that's used in-house with Seiko. Uh, and then, you know, icing on the cake. What did they do with the SKX? You know, they, they turned it into a Seiko 5, although I will say that Back in the day, uh, Seiko 5 hang tags were on a lot of SKXs. Um, so although they didn't have it on the dial, they kind of were sold underneath uh, that banner for a while. But now you get something like this. I mean, solid links, solid end links, uh, display case back, drilled lugs, all these things that you know I was paying extra money for before. Um, and now you're getting it right out of the box. You're getting, now they even added an affordable GMT movement in here, which is 
amazing, right? You're getting the raised indices. You're getting all the stuff, again, that you really um, were, were pining for before. And he said, hey, I wish they would make a more premium SKX. They do now. It's Of course, it's not quite a dive watch anymore. It does have 100 meters of water resistance still, um, so it has good seals and everything like that. But without a screw down crown, um, there's nothing really that's guaranteeing that it, it will stay plugged in, meaning that, you know, of course, once you have the crown out, then the, the water resistance isn't going to be the same. So um, there's that. But honestly, you could totally take the thing swimming. And as long as the crown stays pushed in, you're good to go. Um, and you would obviously t probably not even go uh, you know, recreationally diving uh, lower than 30 or 40 meters. So you would be absolutely fine with something with 100 meters of water resistance, even though that is you know kind of measured in terms of static measurements. Um, and you could technically be adding more pressure to it while you're thrashing around underwater. Uh, it would still be fine uh, for swimming and stuff like that as long as you keep the crown pushed in. So again, you have something now that it just doesn't require all that work and all the digging and you know all the fun all, all the delights because now it's seiko 5 they've turned the 5kx into something of a just a seiko mod out of the box with all these really great um you know collaborations with you know from fashion brands to anime um to to really everything video games that they, they that's just their platform for fun they, they really dialed into that kind of seiko mod community of everything being different i'm sure they saw tons of seiko mods skx mods specifically where they had 24 hour um bezel inserts and then they do that and they actually even have the movement to match it which is cool and then you know just the more the most recent purchase is this beautiful slim turtle which goes back to the design heritage of of Seiko and it's innately Seiko. You see this, it's a Seiko dive watch um, and it doesn't need any changes. I mean, it's nice to swap out the strap because uh, this particular model only comes on Seiko uh, silicone uh, dive strap. Um, and then, but you tie something like this and then it just, it looks beautiful. It just flows really well. And yeah, now that I have this, I don't need to try to recreate that you know, on a different platform, uh, which was kind of the whole draw was, yeah, you can buy an SKX, um, you know, for 150, 200, 300 bucks. And then you could put another couple hundred bucks into it and you could have your perfect watch. Like that's what this represented for me. But now you can just kind of buy one out of the gates, you know, like you can just have your perfect Seiko watch. Um, and not have all of the baggage that might come with folks seeing mods as Franken watches or anything like that. Um, and yeah, again, you, you have something that is infinitely versatile, feels more premium, still ties into everything you love about the brand, except it's from them, you know, uh, which is which is cool is that you can just buy that. I think that was a lot of people's uh, reaction when they, they heard how much I had spent or estimated or if they went to you know Artifice's website to see how much it would cost to have a similarly specced watch. You know, people spending six, 700 bucks on Seiko mods. Um, some people were like, hey, I would rather just pay a little bit more and, and you know, I wish Seiko would just do, and then boom, Seiko does that, right? For right around a thousand bucks. And honestly, you can get these now for well under a thousand bucks um, from different websites. Like if you go to Sakura, which is um, uh, linked in the very first review I did for this model, which is one of my most popular videos, um, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, yeah, you can buy this one right here, this model for like around 800 bucks now uh, or, or less at this point. It's pretty wild. Um, so everyone kind of complains in the beginning, then availability stays up and, um, you know, demand goes slightly down and then you can buy these new for, you know, a real bargain. Um, so that's cool, you know, and then again, you got things that just kind of scream Seiko where this is like just infinitely versatile skin diver, you know, 
um, with a lot of street cred because it's a Seiko. You get stuff like this where it just screams Seiko, right? These are just, they're Seiko silhouettes. They have the offset crowns, you know, they have the dual marker at 12 o'clock, uh, the stoplight seconds hand. A lot of those features that just feel like Seiko, um, you know, uh, that are still there for you to enjoy. Then you got stuff like this, you know, niche stuff um, where instead of maybe hunting down uh, a special variant, and <coughs> excuse me, of an SKX, you can just track one of these down and get it for less and it's ultimately a more capable watch and some would say even more attractive. I mean, it's just more modern, feels more solid and is uh, more versatile than the SKX in general. Of course, I'd say a little bit more polarizing in terms of the fact that it's layout um, is, is gonna be yeah, a little bit different, right? It's not quite as universal looking, but it's quirky enough um, but at the same time, you know, symmetrical and, and universal enough to where I think this could easily be your one Seiko dive watch. Um, and then, yeah, then you got stuff like this, which is just not only a standout within the Seiko realm, but you take this and you put it up against a Swatch Group watch. Um, and, you know, it offers something in the fact that it has um, a mechanical automatic GMT movement. And that's awesome. And it also has a very recognizable silhouette, um, you know, that people recognize the SKX. It's become such a cult classic at this point. You see this and, and it does give you some level of nostalgia, uh, thinking about the years and years of, uh, you know, of iterations of these Seiko divers. So, yeah, there's just a lot that's there. And ultimately, that's what kind of was the downfall of my enthusiasm for Seiko modding um, because yeah at this point you can just buy better watches out of the box than you can probably imagine <laughs> and yeah there's still always gonna be quirks and changes but not any to the point to where I feel like it's worth the trouble whether it be sourcing rare dials and parts and and waiting those exorbitant lead times and, and paying you know any type of exorbitant pricing um, you can just get something out of the box. Like you can just buy this right now. You know, you can buy these right now. Um, even if on the affordable side, right? Under 500 bucks, you can buy stuff like this now instead. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys. Bye.